Is Xbox working on a handheld console? Don't miss your chance to play Halo Infinite for $1. And are Xbox and Bungie due for a reunion? Let's discuss. So we're coming up on Bungie's 30th anniversary and newer or maybe younger gaming fans will know Bungie as the people behind Destiny 1 and 2. It's a very big multiplayer sci-fi shooter. But younger fans or new fans to gaming might not know that they also did the first few Halo games. That means Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo ODST, and Halo Reach before they split from Microsoft in 2007. Since Bungie left Microsoft in 2007, 343 Industries has taken over stewardship of the Halo franchise. And a lot of people say that the Halo franchise has declined since then. They regard Bungie's, you know, Halo 1 through 3, ODST, and Reach as the height of the franchise. My personal favorite, story-wise, it would be a toss-up between Halo 2 and Halo Reach. For the multiplayer, that would definitely be Halo 3. I spent a lot of time in multiplayer for Halo 3 in my youth with my buddies. In a recent interview, Phil Spencer went on to say that he understands why Bungie left in the uh, later 2000s, saying that at the time they had big ambitions. They had sold their business for a certain amount of money. They saw what Halo turned into and it's like, okay, Microsoft benefited more than Bungie did from the success of Halo. There's no other story that can be written there. He continued, referencing Bungie's next big hit, the sci-fi shooter Destiny. If you're saying, hey, I think I've got another one of those in me, I wanna really take another chance. I can understand the allure of doing that as an independent company. They wanted to ask Phil Spencer, hey, do you think that that Bungie split from Microsoft was inevitable? Was there anything you could do to prevent that? And in true Phil Spencer fashion, he shot back and he said, if it was today, I definitely think we could have held on to them. I definitely think we could have kept them under the Microsoft Xbox Game Studios umbrella. And that's not exactly surprising, right? We know that Xbox has taken some pretty big swings when it comes to studio acquisitions, when it comes to all of uh, ZeniMax Media, for example, which includes uh, Bethesda, Arcane, Obsidian. And we know that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's the money, it's the checkbook, they want to be bankrolled by Microsoft. But I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it's discounting what Xbox is doing as a company and what Phil Spencer has done to elevate the Xbox brand. For example, the head of Obsidian says that they think they viewed Xbox as the company that were just likable, that you can even have a beer with. And that speaks volumes to what Phil Spencer and Xbox is about currently. And I would really, really love to see a reunion between the two. Maybe bring Bungie back into the fold. I don't know how that would affect 343, but it would be nice to see, you know, a homecoming of sorts for Bungie. I don't think Bungie would be interested at all in coming back to Xbox and Microsoft because think about it. They've walked away from two big companies and it's worked out each time. They walked away from Microsoft and they put out Destiny, which turned out to be be a huge title. And then Activision, they didn't own Bungie, but they owned Destiny. And somehow Bungie ended up walking away from Activision 2 and managed to hold on to that Destiny IP. I don't know how, what kind of wizardry they did to do that, but whatever they're doing, they're clearly doing something right. Now, when we talk about all of these studio acquisitions and getting more studios under the Xbox umbrella, I think a lot of that is due to Phil Spencer's efforts. And that begs the question, Hmm, who's gonna take over for Phil Spencer? Who can fill his shoes and continue to move Xbox forward in a new direction? And that is the question on a lot of people's minds. Phil Spencer says, hey, I've been in the business, I've been here for 33 years, so obviously I have way more years behind me than I do ahead of me. And the question of his successor is something that he's been pretty coy about. So that's something I'm definitely gonna be keeping an eye on. Definitely a lot of the video game industry is going to keep tabs on as we go forward in this new generation. So we're about a few weeks away from Christmas and this time of year is, there is just a ton of video games out there to be played to be bought, to try out. And in that same spirit, there is a demo event going on right now, or by the time this video comes out, starting on the 7th, running through December 21st. That's right. ID at Xbox Winter Game Fest is a demo event that features 38 playable demos that you can download from the Microsoft Store and try out for yourself. I think of the old days when you get a video game magazine and there'd be a little disc in there and it included five demos. Those games, those demos, were mostly just previews of an already finished game. These demos that are gonna be a part of this event 
are more like early builds of certain video games. So keep that in mind. Don't download them and be like, what? This game is trash. It's totally unfinished because they are early builds and the developers would like to hear your thoughts. So if you download a game that's part of this event, then they encourage you to go on social media, Twitter, Discord, and let these developers know your thoughts of their early games. So scrolling through right now, just taking a look at these, there's, like I said, 38 games. So that's a lot of demos for you to try out. For example, Loot River. Set in a series of procedurally generated labyrinths, Loot River is a dungeon crawling action-like roguelite that combines the tense, real-time combat and dark fantasy stylings of Dark Souls with the spatial block shifting puzzles of Tetris. I love when people mention um, Dark Souls when comparing a game. <laughs> I feel like that's just the go-to thing. It's like Dark Souls, it's like Dark Souls. This game is sort of like Dark Souls. That's just the go-to reviewer tactic. I think that's hilarious. But if you wanna check out games like that, remember you only have until December 21st to do it. And like I said, let the developers know your thoughts. So by the time this video comes out, Halo Infinite's campaign will officially have launched. And I'm super excited about it. I've heard a lot of great things about it. I've been having a ton of fun in multiplayer, but I understand that not everyone is as excited as me. Fans of the franchise will notice that a lot of features and characteristics that have been coming out with every Halo title are going to be missing from Halo at launch. That includes a co-op campaign, that includes Forge. Right now in multiplayer, there's no SWAT, there's no Fiesta. They did have a special event for Fiesta. There's no uh, fire team. They just started making Slayer mode a little bit more um, of a common occurrence. For a while, they were just pushing objective modes. A lot of people were frustrated. I'm tired of playing Capture the Flag. For example, I played four Capture the Flags in a row and it's like, I'm, you know what? I just wanna play some Slayer. <laughs> and there's no dedicated playlist either. So there are a lot of, I'm enjoying it, but there are a lot of things that people are upset about, I will say. For example, r slash Halo got shut down because people were getting too ornery, too crazy, getting a little bit uh, personal with the devs, doxing them, sending them all sorts of threats. And that's not cool. But if you fall into one of those camps and you're saying, this is kind of whack that they're launching this Halo game with all of these features missing, then I have news for you. You can try Halo Infinite's campaign, which is usually 60 bucks, for a dollar. Yes, that is one single dollar, one USD. And that's because, as we all know, Halo Infinite is launching day one on Game Pass. And for those of you who don't have Game Pass, you're in luck because right now, Microsoft is doing a special for three months for PC Game Pass for a dollar, or if you're on console, one month of Game Pass for a dollar. So if you're one of those skeptics out there, this is the perfect opportunity because really, how mad can you be at a game when you're literally playing it for free or for a dollar? It's not bad, right? It is a bit of a bummer that these features are missing. I loved playing SWAT in all the other Halo games and it's been kind of a bummer that I can't play in this new Halo Infinite, this new brand new shiny Halo. Uh, but I will say to their credit, 343 has been listening and they've been trying their best, I feel, to implement the feedback that they get as fast as they can into the game. For example, they have confirmed that SWAT, Fiesta, and dedicated playlists are coming sometime before the end of the year. Not at launch, again, that's a bummer and people are saying, what have you been doing for the past six years, Rob? But I will, I'm trying to be patient, give them credit, and like I said, I'm still excited to play the game. Some of these modes I just don't really personally use. I have not played campaign co-op with someone for years and years and years. I just can't find anyone to do it with me. And I have not used, same thing, Forge. That's just not something I use. So th those missing features to me, not that big of a deal. It is kind of a bummer that they have confirmed if you want to replay certain missions in the single player campaign, you won't be able to unless you restart the game, which is kind of a bummer as well. But 
I will say you can join Game Pass for a dollar and that will give you a month of playing time. And a month of playing time, that's, you know, a pretty decent amount of time for you to play the game, form your own opinion, decide whether or not it's worth it to buy the game in its current state. And, or, and if it's not, hey, you're out a dollar, it's not that big of a deal. So Razer just came out recently and confirmed that they were working on a handheld gaming device powered by Qualcomm Technologies Snapdragon chip. And in their reporting of this, Windows Central said that Microsoft was dabbling extensively in their own handheld device. And that of course is pretty interesting because as we all know, Nintendo has been pretty much the king of handheld gaming for a while now. Uh, they dominated with the 2DS, 3DS, and of course now the Switch and the Switch Lite. Now of course PlayStation had a handheld portable device, but it didn't quite blow up as much as the Nintendo stuff and they completely abandoned the Vita, which I sorely, sorely miss. I wish they hadn't have done that. <laughs> but uh, that left Nintendo, like I said, to be pretty much the only person in the handheld gaming space. That was, of course, until recently when Valve got into the game when they announced the Steam Deck. And of course, now Razer has announced this new portable device as well. Xbox and handheld gaming, unlike PlayStation when they had the PSP, they've never had a handheld device ever. Never had a handheld dedicated device. So rumors, although Windows Central is super credible, I'm a big fan of them, I'm unsure how likely it is we're gonna see a handheld Xbox cloud gaming machine. But I would say if they were gonna do it, it's probably gonna look a lot like these prototypes that we've seen from Razer. Um, as you can see in this picture right here, you have like the standard YBXA buttons. And it kind of makes sense a little bit because as Xbox continues to make strides with cloud gaming, this would be perfect. Already we're seeing a pop-up market like the Backbone, the Razer Kishi, um, the clip-on that you can put on your controller and stick your phone on there for cloud gaming and portable gaming. So it would sort of make sense for them to get into that if they wanted to go that way. Hey, here's a dedicated handheld device that is just a cloud gaming machine that's just an Xbox Game Pass machine. It's perfect for when you're on the go, you don't have to wait waste your phone's battery or buy all this other accessories. Um, in that way, it makes sense. But for me, I'm not sure. I keep wondering if they want to invest in any more hardware, if they're gonna keep pushing cloud gaming, if they're gonna keep pushing their software like Xbox Game Pass. Now for me, a handheld gaming device dedicated to just Xbox stuff would be pretty clutch, right? Right now, the options are you have your phone and then you can get like I said, a backbone controller or a Razer Kishi and plug it into your phone. But like I said, it kind of kills your battery on your phone. It takes a lot to stream the game. It takes a pretty decent connection, whether it's 5G or straight up Wi-Fi connectivity to run that game. And it could, like I said, drain and kill your battery pretty quick. So having a dedicated device rather than going to my phone and running up the battery would be kind of nice, but I would like to see a decent amount of storage options because having to be connected to the internet for cloud gaming, for a game pass all the time, it kind of limits the practicality of it, right? If you have a Switch, you can plug in a game cartridge or a game that you've already downloaded and play wherever you are. No matter if you have an internet connection or not, even if you have a dumb, crappy internet connection, I don't know. And that's part of the convenience of it. I would not want an always online handheld device is the point I'm trying to make. Anyway, that's all the news I have for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Ray, if you're tuning in for the first time. Make sure you go on over to Twitter and follow me at StayXboxReady. If you have any questions regarding what you see on this channel, that's the best way to reach me. I'm also gonna start streaming on Twitch. So if you wanna keep up to date on when I go and stream live, make sure you follow the channel, make sure you follow my Twitter, and make sure you follow me on Twitch, Xbox Ready. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.